I'm going to talk about um, my sermon title. First of all, I hope you're doing well. And my sermon title today is The Best Preacher You've Never Heard. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do, and I thank you for what you're about to speak. God, I, God, I, I pray that you permeate my words with, you, with your love and your grace and your seasoning. I can't do this on my own. I need you, Father. Speak to me, speak through me, in the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. This sermon came out of, um, Me just um, thinking about things and how I talk to myself and um, how I um, talk about myself to myself. Um, and when I say the best preacher you've never heard, I'm talking about you. Because sometimes because sometimes we preach to ourselves and we don't even know we're preaching to ourselves. We're talking to ourselves constantly about different things and about our lives and we don't even know that we're speaking so horribly to ourselves. The Lord asked me a very interesting question. He said, he said, if you were to put in a sermon what you're saying to yourself right now, would people respond negatively or would you, would you be getting a lot of amens? And I said, probably negatively, probably I would get kicked off of YouTube and Facebook and a lot, at the least I'll, I would get is a lot of, uh, a lot of thumbs down. And he said, he said, um, tell them that they're the best preacher that they've ever heard. We're often looking for um, a sermon outside of us and we're looking for, we want a word for the, from the Lord. But what the Lord is saying today is you have all the words that you need. You've heard all the sermons in the world so now it's time to start using it. And she said, the best preacher you've never heard is you. Because although we talk to ourselves, we, we don't take the time to really listen to ourselves and understand what we're coaching ourselves to do. We call ourselves oh, stupid, or we, we speak very, um, like, horribly to ourselves, and we, we just, we just don't realize that that is actually preaching to ourselves. 
that is actually instructing our, our lives and what we say to ourselves is key and along with what we say to ourselves um it is actually um it is actually um what we do in our lives our actions that preach to um like because most times it's not what you say to people that matters it's how you treat them and how you act towards them and that will preach and change their lives because if you're saying something and doing another people are looking at what you do and a common criticism of the church is that they're saying one thing and doing another and the lord is saying let your actions preach let your actions preach for you sometimes we just work so hard on saying we believe in jesus we believe in jesus and we don't realize that our actions are not speaking that as well and he's saying it's very important in this season that your actions uh preach louder than your words um because your actions towards people will either bring them towards the lord or turn them off of the lord um apart from your actions it's your life that preaches when i say your life that preaches i don't mean your life that you're living i mean the life of your tongue the life of your words are you speaking life to yourself or death to yourself and i went over over this briefly um when i said that your people respond more to to what you say and how you, um what you people respond uh to how you act more than what you say so your life is preaching for you although you may not think your life is preaching but it is preaching uh for you how how do you react um what how do you speak when people come in contact with you do you speak life to their situation or are you speaking death to their situation because how you speak about people and um, about their situations can really preach as well and i and i've learned recently that it's so easy to speak negatively about people's situations um and we need to speak life in the people we need to um we need to bring out and your words can bring out light in people that you wouldn't even know your words can propel people into death or into life so speak life in every situation speak life and i know that i've struggled with this especially when i get frustrated i'm like i'm like saying all this stuff but i've got to learn and you've got to learn and we all got to learn to speak life and we've got to remember that this is a journey for all of us and not all of us will be on the same the same journey at the same time same time and we're all just working through life as we work through life life in our different ways of working through it and you you might be all the way through, through some circumstance but they might not be 
they might still be working through stuff, and you might not know what they're working through. Um, but they might be working through stuff. So have um give people the grace space to just be figuring stuff out and let your life preach to people more than uh what what you say or even what you do although what you do is important like i said before but let your life preach as well as what you do um another thing that preaches in you is your strife you can really tell who a person is by how they go through problems some people go through problems and their heads held down and you could really tell that this is weighing on them and they're like you can really tell and some people go through problems and you could hardly tell at all and they're just so going through it so well and so encouraging and they encourage other people when they go through problems so that is preaching the people as well because how you go through trouble speaks a lot about um more about who god is than who you are um and that preaches as well because when you go through trouble you, you get trouble burns out of you everything that is not needed and leaves what is necessary for your destiny trouble burns out of you what is not needed and leaves what is necessary for your destiny so so that's how you're so any situation you're going through is is burning what you don't need off of you to leave you with the necessary tools to go through to your destiny or your god ordained purpose your god ordained um the purpose that god has for you there's nothing like trouble to show you who you are and you who god is god reveals himself on the mountain top top but he reveals to you who you are in the valley and then you get to see more who god is in the valley there is no greater teacher than trouble so when you when i talk about your what i'm calling your strife preaching i mean when you go through trouble it 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 shows those around you and most importantly it shows you who you are and it reveals what you've already got inside but before trouble hits you can't wait for trouble to pray you can't wait for trouble to worship those have to be tools in your arsenal when things are going fairly smoothly so that when you get into trouble you have something to pull from if you don't build a life of worship if you don't build a life of prayer if you don't build a life of the word or fasting when you're into trouble you won't have anybody to anything to grab on to so start building your life in the good times it's not um i heard i heard um i think it was uh i forget who it was 
say it's not in war times that you start making preparation for war. It's in peacetime. Uh, oh, I think it was Pastor Ron Carpenter uh, um, that said that. It's in peacetime that you have to build your arsenal up for war. So if you're going through if you're going through warfare, start start building your arsenal. But even if you're not, build it up anyway. Because when you get into trouble, you will need a strong prayer life. You'll need a worship life. You'll need a fasting life. You'll need all of that before to fight off the enemy to fight off the evil one even you know not just to fight off the devil but to fight fight off the inner me to fight off yourself you know you know the greatest enemy is not the devil although he is out there but the greatest enemy is your inner inner man your your inner me that's your greatest enemy and even prayer worship in the word fights that off it's it's not only for the devil outside of you it's what's going on in you that is defeating you and prayer worship and the word are tools in your arsenal that you can use to build your inner me up so that when you get into trouble you you fight fair you fight with tools you don't fight with um with no tools prayer worship in the world and the word are tools that you can fight with when you get into a fight, even with yourself. Because I know with myself, when I start talking negatively about myself, the best way to, to not do that is to say what, what the Lord says about me. Um, and it is awesome to to um to fight with those tools because you you get to know the strength of the tools you have when you go through trouble when you go through adverse circumstances or what the bible calls diverse temptations uh, when you go through trouble, you get to understand whose you are and who you are and also who you're meant to be and who you're becoming. Uh, you get to find that out too and it's awesome because you come out to be a much stronger person than you ever thought you were. Um, and also the thing that preaches too is your love and this one is perhaps the hardest thing ever because um it's hard to love first yourself first god then yourself then people um because Sometimes it's hard to love God because we don't feel worthy enough and we think we love God. But when we come um, down, to, down to it, we love what he has done for us. We don't love him because he's God. We love him because he first loved us. But I was thinking about this and I was like, 
if somebody said they love me just because I love them, um, that would kind of put me off. And God is never put off. God is not like man. But he really wants us to love him because he's God. Not because he first loved us. Um, although that's what Paul says. I loved you because you first loved me. But he wants us to go deeper in our love for him. Not just because he first loved us, that's a first level, but also just because he is. Because you want your family and friends or your husband and wife just to love you just because you are, just because you're you. And God wants the same thing. And out of that just being God, he will supply you with what you need and occasionally what you want and also our our what preaches is our love for others now this is a difficult one especially when you're dealing with difficult people and sometimes the difficulty is you have to love people uh, from a distance. Sometimes the best way to love people is not to uh, come at them and whatever. It's, it's to let God do what he's going to do with them. Uh, sometimes we try so hard to love people with their actions and give them stuff and give them gifts and that's a part of love that is a part of love but sometimes the best thing you can do is just to say lord work on that person and there is somebody listening to me today who is trying to work on that son or on that daughter you're trying to give them stuff but the best thing you can give them is Jesus and time and tenderness um, Michael Bolton had a song years ago um, that said when when love puts you through the fire, when when love puts you to the test, nothing heals a broken heart like time, love, and tenderness. And and that is what somebody is needing today. You're trying to give them gifts. You're trying to show them you love them. You tell them you love them, and they're so resistant. But the Lord is saying what they need is time, what they need is love, and what they need is just your tenderness. And sometimes your love can be, um, you can love from a distance. Because sometimes people don't respond to the huggy kissy kind of love or you're always there. Some people respond very well to that, but some people respond more to a just a word or a text or just for you to give them space to figure things out. It depends on the person's personality. And the Lord's saying, ask me about that person. Because everyone, everyone works differently when you, when it comes down to it. So ask God how to reach that person, how to love that person in a way that they need. Like, it's like um, that five love languages book.
where um, where the author says people have uh, five ways that they like to feel loved. And so because people have such a different love language, you need to ask the Lord how to best show love to that person. Um, and just simple kindness sometimes is all a person needs to uh, feel loved. Simple kindness, simple understanding, simple just human decency. Sometimes in this fast-paced world, we forget to be kind, we forget to be um, decent. Give me a second. Sorry, um, I don't know what happened there. I uh, hope you st hope you're still with me. Um, I think you are, and yeah, a lot of people. I think I was talking about love and all that stuff and like that we need to take time to understand that sometimes people need to be loved differently and we need to be um we need to have human kindness and decency the world is crying out for god and his love and they don't even know that's what they're crying out for, but that that is indeed what they're crying out for, and that is um, what what they're lacking, and all they need is just human decency and human understanding, and that that kind of thing takes God to just show you how to act to that person. It's it's not by your deeds or by anything anything you say, but it's mostly by your love. Although your actions do help, like I said before. But it's mostly by your love that people know that you're of Christ. And it's mostly by your understanding of them that people uh, understand who God is. So guys, sorry for all the interruptions. Um... And sorry for the late start and all the pauses. Uh, I should tell you what happened. What happened was I, I by accident, I clicked on something from YouTube. So I spent about like five minutes trying to get it down, and then it did, and then it didn't do do anything, and then. Out of nowhere, it, it uh, played music, so that's what happened, why the music came on. It was funny, it was a premiere. Uh, so thank you. I hope you gained a lot from this sermon. I know it was scattered, but I could, I could feel God here. And I could feel him trying to 
to say things to people. Your life preaches more than any sermon ever will. I'll say that again. Your life preaches more than any sermon ever will. Your life, your your actions, your strife, and your love preach more than any sermon ever will. So be careful what sermons you're giving to yourself and to other people as well. So be, be careful of what you're saying to yourself and to other people as well through your life, through your actions, through your strife, and through your love. Because the one thing about uh, your life preaching a sermon is because you can't, you can't take what your life says back. So if you do something to somebody that is awful, you can't, you, that person can forgive you and even forget, but in the back of their mind, there will still be that that perception of what you what you did, even though they don't bring it up, even though they've forgiven you. So be careful of how you're preaching to yourself, to yourself as well, because. How you're preaching to yourself will affect your life. And know that we're all on a journey. Know that we're all just figuring this thing out. And we all need the space of grace to learn, to grow, to change. And... And... Preach volumes this week, not through your words, but through your life, through your actions, through your strife, and through your love. Let God speak through those things. Let your life preach a sermon more than you ever could with your words. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye. See you guys later. I hope this sermon blessed you.